Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be making some benzene. Now benzene is going to be made from sodium benzoate and sodium hydroxide heated in this can over here. As you can see I've made a hole in the top, I've punched a hole in the top, that's how I did it, I punched it. But yeah, so in, I'm going to actually be using quite a bit of ben, uh, sodium benzoate. I'm going to be using 2 kgs and 720 grams of sodium hydroxide. The sodium hydroxide is in excess, it should be around 555 grams. Right, so I'm gonna be, what I'm going to do is, I've bought a blender here. Alright, so now I'm, it's important to wear a gas mask here because you're going to be creating a lot of sodium hydroxide dust. And that, in, and that can go into your lungs, so we don't actually want that. And yeah, so I've set up the blender and there's the 375 grams of sodium hydroxide. I should do it like this. Yeah, and yeah, I'm just gonna pulse. So I think we need to change the plans. So this is already in, like full enough. It's about halfway full. So what I'm gonna do is is add a little bit more sodium hydroxide in. Actually, I might just add the rest. Uh, then, in theory, my yield should be since it's half. I should get in milliliters roughly 619 milliliters at 100% yield of benzene. All right. So an update. I have transferred. 1 kg and 720 grams of sodium hydroxide into this canister and I've taken some throw tape around the sides and it's actually made quite a good seal when I pressed it down you can feel it, it's quite fuss and now I'm going to put the glass joints in place alright basically the most of the glassware is set up start running the antifreeze through and this is what it looks like it doesn't have to be such cold antifreeze it really doesn't but it helps Oh, it looks really nice. Ah. Alright, so I've tried to twist as much as possible. You see I've got a little bubble there, which is fine. I don't want to put any more tension on the joists, and the exiting line is actually quite short. Um, yeah, and that's the, the condenser column set up. Now I'm going to set up the floors, clean everything up, and then All start right, heating. So the distillation is now underway. The heating has been turned on. And I've put the extraction fan right at the top there, so if there are any benzene fumes, that will be sucked up away. Right, so the benzene is seems to be freezing up into the column, as you can see there is an ice chunk forming. Uh, what I've decided to do is, I've decided to recycle the water in the condenser. I've also decided to, um, to uh, do something like this. It seems to be working better than me holding it. And yeah. Hey guys, so as you can see I've moved it outside and it's been, it's actually going a lot better. I've put this metal grid just so the flames don't reach the glassware. As you can see, it's all the smoke coming through. This time I'm actually getting dripped and it's this time it's also not freezing in the column. Alright, this is quite uh, long to the distillation now. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of benzene there, pre benzene, and I'm quite happy about it because my previous wheel that was a little later was in that uh, 500 milliliter flask, and that was not a lot. This is, this is nearly a full time of the milliliter flask. I don't know if I'll have to swap it out. But as you can see, like, yeah, you know, not a lot of famous people would probably put their uh, glassware through this type of torture, but so far, it seems to be working. As you can see, we've got a leak on the can there. And by the joint. Now, I can blow it out and then it'll just probably recut a light, but I think I prefer it actually to burn like that. 
because the flame won't be able to jump back into the can because there isn't actually any oxygen in the can. Also, um, I'd rather have uh, CO2 into the air rather than benzene fumes. So it's better to have it burning like that than to not have it burning. As you can see, the glassware is quite a, <laughs> it's quite black from all the, sm uh, the smoke. As you can see, we've still got fumes coming out of the adapter there. But yeah, quite a lot of benzene. Alright, so I've hooked up the, the flask and it'll be lowered onto the heating plate. As you can see, it's rising up the column very quickly. I've turned on the cooling now, as you can see. I've definitely tu I've turned the I've actually turned the heat off now, as you can see. This is way too far. I'm going to turn portrait here, sorry, just so you can get the whole column. Um, yeah, as you can see how the fractional column is working there and how it's slowly reaching the top. Uh, yeah, but it's definitely boiling very 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 quickly as you can see here's the, the Condensed vapors here or the dense vapors of benzene and it's going to run through there and dribble over The coils and then it should start dripping straight into the flask there as you can see it's practically running down the flask So this is the final product of benzene. As you can see, it's frozen. I'm storing it in the freezer at the moment. I might have to do another fractional distillation in the future because I don't have any calcium chloride at the moment to dry it. And I'm going to be using this to make some nitro, benzene, and aniline in the future. So yeah, thanks for watching.